come back to this course on digital systems. Um, so, having studied how to implement arbitrary Boolean functions over the last couple of weeks and their optimization and uh, implementation for a given standard cell library, right? We now move on to uh, looking at some very useful combinational circuits that are very commonly used in microprocessor design. Okay, so let's start uh, with a very simple uh, idea. It's called a decoder, right? So let's first understand the application of this decoder and where it is used, and then we will be able to design and understand this. Uh, you know the uh, the the functionality and the implementation better. Okay, so. Typically, in any microprocessor, you have something called a memory. Okay, you have a memory, and a memory is nothing but a an array in which you store data. Okay, so you have, you know, memory cells. Each square is a memory cell, and you are just going to store data like this. You have each row 0, row 1, all the way to row n minus 1, okay. So, there are n rows, okay, and we are going to access data from this memory one at a time. So, how, what do we do? We need to, you know, activate row 0 and that is typically called an address, okay. An address is basically going to uniquely tell you which set of bits you are going to access from the memory. Um, the Physically, the address could be, uh, you know, just uh, telling you which row to access or which columns to access as well. But we will not get into that. For now, just let's assume that there is an address, okay, and it is going to tell you which row to access and depending on which one you turn on, you will get the data. For example, if you turn on row 1, then you will read the data out of this row. So, the, let's assume there are m bits here, 0 to m minus 1. So, every time I give an address, I will get m bits of information out of the memory that is being read out, okay. Now, in order to do this, I need a circuitry that will help me access only one row at a time, okay. And the job of a decoder is exactly this. Right. So, now the question is, first of all, if I have n rows, right, then how many bits of information do I need to capture that address? Okay. Like I said, there is an address that is going to tell me which row to turn on. How many bits should that be? I have n rows here. Okay. n rows. Okay. In that case, I need log to the base 2 of n bits, bit address, right. So, if I have and this is something we have seen earlier a n minus 1 a n minus 2 all the way to a naught assuming a naught is the LSB, uh, a n minus 1 is the MSB and so on, right. The number of combinations binary combinations that this n bit number can cover is 2 power n, right. So, therefore, if I have uh, some n bits, I would get 2 power n possible combinations and therefore, you will always see that the number of, uh, you know, addresses and stuff like that typically will be in the powers of 2, right, because ultimately I need log to base 2 of n of them, right. Uh, okay, here I cannot use because I am using, I cannot use n here because I have. So, let me use k, k minus 1, yeah. So, that it becomes very clear, 2 power k should be equal to n for me, right. And therefore, the number of rows typically will be in powers of 2, uh, even if it is not the case. Uh, it's okay. I'll show you how to handle that case uh, very trivially at a later stage, right? 
So, therefore, a decoder is right a decoder just like uh, by the way a NAND, NOR, gate and all can have n inputs and any number of outputs right. So, therefore, decoder has n inputs and 2 power n outputs ok. So, what is this? If I just look at it in terms of a black box, I have address bits a0, a1 all the way to a n minus 1. I have outputs which are going to be y0, y1, right. Um, uh, let me call this k equal to, okay y k minus 1 okay where k is equal to 2 power n right. So, this is a n is to 2 power n decoder okay. Typically, you would have 3 is to 8 decoding or 4 is to 16 decoding and so on okay. So, let us take a very simple example first let us start with a 3 is to 8 decoder so that it is easy for us to follow 3 is to 8. So, at uh, my inputs are A0, A1 all the way to uh, A0, A1, oh it is only sorry 3 bits. So, A0, A1, A2, my outputs are Y0, Y1, y7 okay now what should what should the truth table of this 3 is to 8 decoder look like so a2 a1 a0 i have eight outputs y0 y1 y2 y3 all the way to y7 okay so 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 ok. The output here if the input happens to be 0 is 1 ok and then for any other combination of inputs I want it to be 0 ok. Y 1 is only when the combination is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, right, y2 is 0, 0, 1, like that, 0, 1, it goes, right, last one is everything is 0, only the thing. So, the output yk uh, is simply going to be m k is that right the min term k ok there are there are as many outputs y0 to y7 as there are combinations of inputs and there is only one min term that is actually going to uh, you know determine the output y k. So, y k is equal to m k right. So, there is no sum of products it is actually just a product that we are talking about ok. Now, of course, because you have 8 outputs we need all the uh, min terms to be available and therefore, the implementation is going to be in terms of the standard um, NAND NOR and all that ok. This is a use this is a useful way to draw the implementation ok. Uh, A2 A1 A0 ok and I am going to now generate the inverted output as well ok and 
Now what do I need? I just need the min term. So y0 for example is a0 bar, a1 bar, a2 bar, right? Or if you want me to write it from MSB to LSB, it is like this, okay? y1 is a2 bar, a1 bar, a0 and so on, right? So all I have to do now is put 8 AND gates here. Okay, uh, need to extend this. Right. So now what do I do? I just take A0 bar from here, A1 bar, A2 bar. Okay, note that when a, when a horizontal line crosses a vertical line, there is no connection. If I want a connection, I will explicitly put a dot here. So this one, the next one, right? This is Y0, Y, this is just here and right so like that i will just draw it i'll just do a dot 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 and just show you y7 here eventually y7 y1 so now for y7 i need to take all the two values so okay so this is a very useful way for you to draw your, uh, you know, the schematic or the logic diagram as well involving the gates where you generate true and complement vertically and then tap out the necessary connection that you want for that particular min term. Okay, this is in general very useful to do. So therefore, now what you have, you have three inputs out here and generating eight <coughs> outputs y0 to y7 right so this is uh, you know uh, the idea of a decoder and in general if i were to just extend this okay to uh, you know the uh, uh, n is to 2 power n decoder then all i have to do is literally do exactly the same thing for all n, in, n inputs generate true and complement and uh, you know, so how many AND gates do I need here? Let's just write that out. Again, you have three inverters, okay, and eight AND three gates. Right? With this, you are able to implement a 3 is to 8 decoder. If I did, uh, this is 3 is to 8 decoder. If I did n is to 2 power n decoder, obviously I would need n inverters and then I would need as many 2 power n and okay, uh, how many inputs as many as uh, there are okay and n gates. Okay. So this is a very, uh, you know, a very uh, standard 3 is to 8 decoder that people use. And we will then see later how to build this higher decoder. Let's say I want 4 is to 16 or 5 is to 32 using the smaller decoders, okay, that we will come to later. But in general, this decoder has one certain disadvantage, okay. If a0, A1, A2, right? If you look at the output, if you just look at the outputs Y0 to Y7, you just focus on this, right? Here, you will see that at least, uh, sorry, yeah, you will see that at least one output is high for any combination of inputs, right? That means, that does the decoder is always active irrespective of what my 
you know what my uh, inputs are and that may not be a good thing because I might want an inactive state also. Inactive state means no output is high and therefore the decoder will now take an additional input right uh, which is enable okay. So basically you take the decoder okay here same 3 is to 8 a2 a1 a0 this is called the enable okay and then I have my outputs y0 y1 all the way to y7. So the truth table here is a2 a1 a0 then y0 y1 all the way to y7. Now if the enable is 0 right it does not matter what my inputs are, I want all the outputs to be 0. This is the expected behavior. It is only when the enable is 1, I want my decoder to react to what inputs I give, in which case it will look like this, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, 1, 1, right. In that case, this is just 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, all the way going, 0, 1, right. And then you are essentially done here. So, this is the new decoder that we want with an enable. So, in general, you will find in digital circuits that we have a basic functionality but there will be a master enable that says should this circuit be active or not and therefore we now need to modify this diagram that we got earlier right and figure out how to incorporate that enable signal right. So let us see what we have here now since so now if you see y0 right it is m0 if enable equal to 1 otherwise it is 0 if enable equal to 0 okay. So tip very evidently you can see that you can simply write this as enable and m0 now. You can simply make it an enable and m0 and simply solve this whole uh, issue right. So now uh, there are again multiple ways in which you can do this right you can uh, take this implementation that we have here right and I can do two things I can do one of the two things I can take this and feed it through another set of AND gates. right where the second input to that AND gate is going to come from the enable right or you might want to send this input above enable right so I am going to feed y7 here yeah and effectively I will just take off this vice this is y0 y1 all the way to y7. So this is a very useful variant of this particular circuit okay. So let us sort of keep this decoder in mind okay for us and then we will come back to um, you know this at a later point in time okay